And he said, I'm going to take you to an oasis. Come on. To a land where you can drink from. Yes. I'm going to take you to a place where you won't thirst again. Hey. And I'm going to fulfill my promise in your life. Yes. You may have season in your life where you may not feel me. Come on. But I'm a God that cannot lie. Yes. Will not lie. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. Mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. The angels bow before him. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise one more time. Lord, I love you so much, God. You are my king, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Praise the mighty Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. Look how wonderful He is, y'all. I don't mean to hold you on your feet too long, but I just want to talk about Him before I even go into the Word. He's a good God. Yes, He is. He's the God. It's going to meet you again. Hallelujah. See, many of us have already had an experience where he touched us before. Hallelujah. But he's going to come back and reassure you again. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes you get touched one time, but he said, I'm coming again. Yes. Hallelujah. To let you know that you can be comfort. You can have comfort in me that what I told you in the midst of the trials, I'm going to make sure I do what I said I, I was going to do. Hallelujah. You know, Joseph, he had the dream early on. But there was a season in his life where he was in the dungeon. Come on. The preparation before I put you in the palace. All right. Now everybody ain't called to be in the palace, but it's a place you get in God. All right. When He called you to a place in Him, where nothing else even matters. Where you begin to grow in a way where you know Him. See, the greatest thing is truly to know Him. See, we're looking all over the world to find something, to be a part of something. But when you really know him, y'all, when you begin to learn the fellowship in his suffering, you begin to know him in a, in a greater way, a greater measure. And your hallelujah turns to a greater level of, of worship. Your hallelujah lead to another hallelujah. Your hallelujah lead to some tears coming down your face. Your hallelujah leads you to your knees. Your hallelujah leads you to the place where you can roll on the ground. Your hallelujah leads you to a run and a leap. Your hallelujah leads to a clap and a shout. Your hallelujah go to a greater place because you know him. You ain't got to tell me to worship him. I'm going to worship him regardless of nobody will. If the whole world backslide on Jesus, I got, I, got, I got something with him. He came to me, and I owe him my praise. I owe him my life. I owe him my mind. I owe him everything. I owe him a praise. I owe him a praise. He didn't say it because I was good, y'all. I love how Brother Bigelow preached this morning. If you weren't here, please get the tape. It was outstanding. Amen. But he loved us first, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we can't quite see that. Amen. So we get in God, we realize I'm in God now, and you realize you start seeing all your flaws. Mm -hmm. As if God didn't see your flaws when he got you. Yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> Listen, he can love you beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. He can love, he can see your flaws and still love you beyond that. And his love will cause change. You won't do things because you love him. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to displease your father. Oh. Amen. That's the reason why we live the way that we live, because we love him and we don't want to displease him. It is not rules and regulations, but it's because we love the mighty God. Yes. No. Yeah. Because when I want to sit down and talk to my father, I want to know that I'm in right standings with him. Glory to God. I don't want him to withhold anything from me. No. I want him to show me me. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and read one scripture, guys. And I'm going to let y'all take a seat. I love the Lord so much, y'all. Yeah. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis 32. 
9 through 13. And then I'll let you all see. <clears throat> when y'all there, y'all say amen. 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 <laughs> and Jacob said, O God of my father, Abraham, and God of my father, Isaac, <clears throat> the Lord which said it unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am not worthy of the least of all of the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. <laughs> None of us are worthy, right? None of us are worthy. But he had a revelation right there. What did I leave off of? He said, which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff have I passed over this Jordan. And now I am become two bands. He said, deliver me. I pray thee from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother of, with the children. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which thou cannot be numbered to, for multitude. Last verse. And he lodged there that same night and took of that which, that which came to his hand a, pre, a present for Esau, his brother. You all may be seated. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit first. I got some more to read, but I want to talk to you a little bit before I go into this. Because I got, we got to go back a little bit, right? We got to understand what's happening. Uh, we, we know uh, Jacob and Esau, the story. And if you don't know the story, I'll just try to back brief you a little bit. It's, so, it's a lot that's happening right here. And so to actually explain everything... It's just going to require you to just do some studying on your own or reading on your own. One of the things about the Bible, guys, is it's a remarkable, it's a story. You want to watch some television, just read the Bible. I'm telling you, they got some stories in there that'll have you laughing. You want to watch some reality TV shows, it got some real reality TV shows in the Bible. Just, right. just to show you. And when you read through it, you will really see that you can't believe this stuff is really happening. But I love the Bible because it doesn't hide flaws. It doesn't hide when people have errors. It just shows it as it is. It doesn't, it doesn't try to paint you as a perfect person. And so I love that about the Bible. And so let's, let's I'm going to go back a little bit before I go to this. No, no, no let, let me do this. Let me go to 24 and 31. I'm read through that and then I want, I'm going to go with my first thought. Let's go to 28 first. Genesis 28 and 6. It says, and when Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padam Aram to take him a wife from thence, that, that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife or the daughter of, the Can of Canaan. And then verse 13 through 17 says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. In the land wherein thou, hast, thou liest, to thee will I give thee, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall thou be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. In thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Look at that promise right there, y'all. This, this is before Jacob becomes who he is. As you notice the way that he says that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, but he didn't know who his name was going to become. The God of Jacob. That later on, his children would call the God of Jacob. Amen. Just in like manner to every one of us. But one day, we're going to have to take that God for ourselves. Amen. That our mothers and our fathers may have and, and say, that's my God. The God of Samuel. Amen. That's my God. But he had yet to have, this is his experience with God as of right now, when God appears to him. Now, so in verse 14, he says, no, 15, and behold, I am with thee and I will keep thee in all the places where thou goest and will bring thee again into the land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. This place is called Bethel. Some may say it differently, but the place where the angels of God ascend and descend. 
Verse 24, I'm going to get you somewhere, y'all. So just bear with me. I got I to gotta give you this, though, before I start talking. 32, uh, 24 through 31. <clears throat> and the Lord was left alone, and there was a wrestling. There was a wrestling and wrestled there. Let me go back, I'm sorry. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of his thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let him go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For a prince thou hast power, thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And God asked him and said, Tell me, I in Jacob, sorry, and Jacob asked him and, t and said, Tell, tell me, I pray, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou doest ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to close this for a second. Let's talk a little bit. As I mentioned, as I was kind of exhorting, many of us have already had the point of where we met God. As Jacob, in like manner, there was a place where he met God. He knew of God of Abraham, God of Isaac. But while he was sleeping, the God that they served appeared to him. And like many of us already, God has appeared to us. And when he appeared to us, he appeared to us with promise. What we know as now, many of us has been baptized, been filled with God's spirit. He gave us a promise, but there's an, another promise that he's going to give us. And that promise is eternal life. That promise is something that we're going to be able to go to when this life is over. So we're not laboring in this life for no reason. There's a reason of your suffering. Your suffering is not in vain, as we like to say. And so a lot of times what happens is the, the experience that you had, sometimes you begin to forget it, right? Or sometimes your faith is not where it need to be. So there's a condition that take place to where your clarity has to be changed. And this is the title is the moment of clarity. The moment of clarity, because there come a point in every one of our life that even though we experience God, that we got to have another moment of clarity. Yes. That we got to get really serious with God and begin to call on his name for real. When we get really serious with God, when we're, really, we're willing to wrestle with God so that he can bless us. Yes, he's given you a promise, but the promises do not come fulfilled unless you're willing to wrestle for the promises of God. All right. Yes, we want to see million souls revival, but we got to be willing to wrestle to see the promises fulfilled. This thing does not just come just, by, just because you said you want it. No, you're going to have to wrestle for it. Listen, the kingdom of God suffer violent and the violent, they take it by force. You can't just sit at ease, but you got to get a, a militant mindset. I understand that we're living in a time now where we're being attacked mentally a lot, but we can't allow the mental attack to change what is actually present. All right. What is spoken Come on. Regardless of what we see or what we feel What is spoken yeah. When the enemy came at Jesus The way that he fought was what was spoken We cannot entertain Every gnat that is being That is speaking Sometimes we gotta just fan the gnats And not swallow them Because as we begin to swallow the gnats We lose track on where we going in Christ What the enemy Want us to do is get distracted all right. He wants us to get distracted so that we can lose hope on the place that we're supposed to be in God. God has a promise for you. And if he put himself in you, he's empowered you to do what he said you can do. Sometimes what ha what's happening is as we're walking with God, we're seeing a little bit of frustration come along. Especially if we're looking around. Especially if we see another church that has more people there. Yeah. 
that don't preach or teach the same thing, we think maybe something is wrong. But we got to still lay hold on eternal life. We're living in a time right now that people are not willing, willing to hear sound doctrine. They won't hear the truth. So if you tell them the truth, they won't, they're not willing to hear that. So what do we do as the people of God? We stand in the gap. They know not what they do. They don't know. it. I know because I was there. I remember when I was there. And I remember saying, I don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. That's what I said. Oh, how wrong was I? Oh, how wrong was I? And there's many people out there that sometimes we count them out as if God can't save them. God can save anybody. He can fix the mind of anybody. I don't care what the doctors say that's going on in your mind. Jesus is a mind fixer. He can fix your mind. He can do miraculous in your life. But you got to be willing to fight for the promises of God. If he said he's going to give you a sound mind, he's going to give you a sound mind. But fight for a sound mind. It's not just going to necessarily come, but you got to fight to keep a sound mind. I'm going to put the word on. I'm going to wash my way through. I'm going to press my way through. But I'm not going to allow the enemy to beat me or defeat me because I'm not defeated. I'm walking in power. I walk in the anointing. The grace of God is upon my life. Not because of what I did, but because of what he did. So I love the living God. But we got to stand up in who we are. God called us as children of promise. And if we're called by a promise, he's a God that cannot break it, y'all. The only way that we do not get the promise is if we depart from it. It's on, that's the only way. So that means that even though you're struggling, and even though you have some hard times, Come on. press your way on in. Amen. Keep on coming. Yes. After a while, yes. you're going to find yourself getting stronger. Yes. After a while, you're going to find yourself getting bigger. Come because on. the thing that was holding you, it can't hold you no more. Come on. The thing that was fighting your mind can't hold your mind no more. Because you've been squinting by God. Yes. But keep on coming in. Yes. Keep on telling people to come in. Yes. There's a war to tell people to not to come into the house of God. All right. But keep coming to the house of God. Amen. Listen, you alone fighting against the devil and his agents mm. will probably be defeated. Yes. Unless, the God, unless the grace of God told you to do something where you had to be there. But guess what? When you're with your brothers and sisters in the Lord, there's something that starts breaking off of you just by being around your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Your life is being changed just by coming into the house of God. I want to encourage you. I don't care if you messed up. Listen, y'all, the only people, and I've been taught this, the only people that discount you from the calling of God on your life is man. So if you messed up, get back and do what you called to do. If that's who you are, that's, if God called you a son, you are a son. All right. Repent and go forward. We ain't got time. We, we have no time to waste. There is an urgency that's happening right now. Yeah. An urgency for the people of God to stand up and say no more. No more of my city. No more of my state. No more of my country. No more of the world. We got to stand up. Yeah. And listen, this is not just a pastor thing. This is not just a minister thing. But when the people of God link arms together, we are stronger than any other force in the whole entire world. So I want to see my brother at their best. I want to see my sisters at their best because when you at your best, I'm stronger. Let's get charged about living for God. Let's get charged about loving being at church. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people try to make you feel bad. You going to church again? Y'all right. just had church serving. Y'all always in church. Yeah. Don't worry about letting them talk. Right. After a while, they're going to say, well, you in that church, that it must be good. Right. They might want to get some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't 
Don't let nobody steal your victory. Amen. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Come on. You need to be in the house of God. Yes. As we see the days approaching to forsake not the assembly in ourselves, one another with our brethren. All right. We need to be around each other. Yeah. We need it more. Hallelujah. Guess what will begin to happen, y'all? Hey, mm -hmm. It's glory begin to get on us, y'all. And when we walk, y'all, in any place, a kingdom citizen has walked in there. Yeah. And you may not be able to see what's happening in the spirit realm, but things are moving. Yeah. Because you walked in. Yeah. It has to move back. Yeah. Because a child that's a kingdom citizen has walked in. But what the enemy try to do is strip you of the knowledge of who you are. Right. Right. So you walk in there feeling everything as if you defeat it. But if you raise your chest up, not in pride, but, but in, in, in assurance of who he is that's inside of you to say, I'm a, I'm a child of the king. And everything that's around me got to move. This is who we are. We're not defeated, y'all. We're not defeated at all. But we got the power of the living God inside of us. It doesn't feel like it at times. But when we stir up the guilt, when we begin to get on our pray, on our, on our knees and pray, when we begin to fast and seek the face of God, something begin to shift. Things begin to shake. And yes, you start feeling the devil more then. Mm. Yes, you start feeling things happening more around you. Right. And, and certain the, the enemy gets stirred up. The hornet's nest is stirred. But how many of you know what's on you? When it come near you, it's going to die. All right. When it come near you, it shall not come nigh thee. Right. Did he not say that? Yes. It shall not come nigh thee. Right. So, who, so who are we really? Mm -hmm. We got to really realize who we really are. Yeah. We are seated in heavenly places far above principalities and powers, yeah. rulers of darkness, rulers. It don't matter what's going on. All right. Now. That's who we are. Yeah. And the enemy would love to fight on your mind. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But just like I said earlier, fan the nets. <laughs> Get it behind me. All right. Now. I got purpose. Yes. The biggest issue that we're fighting now, y'all, is flesh. Come on. It's just flesh, y'all. All right. I was thinking, I thought, you know, it's devil. Yes, I do believe there's some devils involved in it because the devil going to operate through flesh. But if we crucify the flesh. Glory. Come on now. If we crucify the flesh. Yes. Then what's going to be speaking? Hmm. Come on, Nothing but the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Yes, I believe that fasting is a part of it, but yielding hmm. yeah. is even better, y'all. Right. Hallelujah. Yielding is even better. Sometimes we think it's just fasting. No, no, no. It's the small things, the small foxes that destroy the vine. It's when God say, "Don't do that. Be quiet. Slow down right now." Now the grace of God is growing stronger. Now you're able to hear Him. Which is the greatest thing ever Amen. is to hear God. Yes. Because when you can hear him, you are never you're never in a place where you feel scattered or, or afraid because he's already speaking to you. Hallelujah. You can have comfort when you can hear God. But when you're really frustrated is when you can't hear. Him. All right. Yeah. And I'm not saying that there are seasons where God just be silent on purpose because he's teaching you. But there are seasons where God is speaking to you while you're walking. Mm -hmm. When you get here, I want you to turn. See, this is what we need. I've heard stories, many stories about this where people have, you know, gotten in a place with God and God has directed them specifically to the doorsteps of individuals to be a witness to them. All right. And many of us have already experienced similar things in like manner yes. where God has basically impressed upon our hearts to be a witness. Mm. After the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall be a witness. No. So that means that we all witness. Amen. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall be a witness. All of us. Should be a witness. And you don't got to go out witnessing. You are a witness. Amen. You're a witness all the time. Yeah. Your conversations are strategic. Yes. I'm talking to you. The whole reason I'm talking to you is to tell you about Jesus. Amen. It's no other agenda. All right. Now. Yes, I may talk about something that's casual. Yeah, football team did. Georgia. Yeah, I played football in school. All right. Yeah. Um, the church you go to. Yeah, all right. I got a strategy. Why? Because the devil got a strategy. He got a strategy as well. You not know that he's going to send people in your life. Come on. Just like God sent people in your life. The enemy is going to try to send somebody in your life to take you off the course. Come on. He's going to send somebody in your life that life is not necessarily holy, but you see them speaking in tongues. Y'all, we got to understand that everybody's speaking in tongues now. That's right. 
Everybody speaking in tongues. I was talking to my wife as, as we came back from Atlanta this morning. And I'm talking to her. I said, I'm learning now to be around people who live the book rather than the people who we love to hear speak. All right. You know, everybody want to be around that great speaker, that person that, that, that revival, that we like to say revival is coming because they come. But I want to be around people who live the Bible. I want to be around people who live the Bible because you can cleave from that. And guess what? People can fake preaching good. My God. They can take a message off a line and they can quote the whole entire message. But one thing you can't do is fake living this, living this life. You can't fake it. After a while, the snake is going to show his head. It's going to show his head. It can't hide too long. So we got to really live this thing out. And we need to be around people that can rub our shoulder. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. You need to be around people that can rub you the wrong way, but have all the right intentions towards you. Let's go. Not the people that rub you the wrong way, but they have no right intentions towards you. Right. Everything they saying is just to hurt you. Mercy. Leave you leaking, cut you, and leave you bleeding. But when we cut, we heal. Mm. We're going to say, I love you, but you can't do this. Mm. Because if you do this, this is what's going to happen. Amen. We want to make sure that your life is prosperous. In every area of your life. Yeah. I love the brothers in here because they always got some great facts to add on to my life. Yeah. I love to hear what they have to say because as I'm listening to them, I'm growing. Right. And even though I may not take it all in right then, as I'm sitting down by myself, I'm thinking about what they said. I'm like, man, that's good. And I begin to research what it is and I'm just adding it to myself. Y'all, it's okay to add something what your brother got onto you. You're not copying them. You see God in them on that area and you want to you wanna grab that and put that on your life. That's what you want. Yes. So we got this, this, this mindset that's coming over to people where we feel like, oh, you copying somebody. Mm. Y'all, if it's good, eat it. Yeah. If it ain't good, don't eat it. Yeah. The problem is, is that, you know, we, we, we got to be able to discern who is right and who ain't right. All right now. And the only way you're going to be able to discern who ain't right is if you're in the book. And if you spend time in prayer and you understand that the way that it don't necessarily that you got to know exactly what it is, but you just got an inward witness that's inside of you. See, something ain't right. Wow. Yeah. That's what you need. See, see, sometimes we think we got to know everything from the Bible in order to be able to walk with God. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't get in the Bible and learn and, and study to memorize the scripture and all those things. You should. Yeah. But when you get in contact with God on a daily basis, whether you understand the word of God or not, because as you begin to read the word of God, whether you understand it or not, it's doing something in you. Amen. The word of God is spiritual. That's why we should read. We should allow that word to pray um, to play in our house even when we're not even there. We should allow that word to play even while we're sleeping because it get into us. That's what we want. We want a continual flow of the word of God. What the enemy is doing is he's giving us continual flow of flesh. Mercy. A continual flow of flesh mm. so you cannot please God because you can't please him in your flesh how can you do it can't do you're not gonna be able to do it so guess what's gonna happen you're going to be condemned because inside of you you want to do what's right but you are you're not you're neglecting the things that actually make you stronger spiritually you know what I learned is that when you're around people of God more and you're spending time fellowship, it's more and more li less likely that you're going to pick up your phone. You're not going to pick it up because you're talking the whole time. You're going to enjoy one another. You're not going to pick it up. But see, the enemy has gained an agenda by he allowing us to be at home. Y'all, this whole agenda for COVID and everything, there's an agenda behind it. I want to isolate you. I want you to put you by yourself so that you can just get on that phone and then I can warp your mind. Because guess what? After a while, you start scrolling on the phone and some woman pop up there or some man pop up there. And all of a sudden, you end up clicking it because you curious. And all he needs is a little seed at a time. Just a little bit at a time. He does not get you off the top just, just like that. Yeah. It's gradually. All right. He'll show you a little bit here, show you a little bit here. All of a sudden, somebody texts you from your past, and you're like, where is this coming from? Right. And you think, this must be God. Oh, no. Oh. 
This ain't God. All right. This ain't God. All right. Because a lot of times this is how it happens, y'all. Come on. This is how it happens. When you filling your flesh up, all of a sudden the enemy send you something that sound like God, similar to God. The voice is soft. And they say to all the right things. And because you're vulnerable and your flesh is built up, that sound right to you. Come on. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's all right. That's yeah. about right. Yeah, he said he just want to sit with me. You know, he just want to, he just, you know, he, he, he interested in me. You know, we hadn't talked in a long time, so, you know. No, you blinded. You blinded. The God of this world has blinded you. You may not be blinded in every area, but you blinded in this area right here. And that serpent going to bite you. It may start off good at first. Because they're going to wind and die in you. Because a, a, a guy or a woman that has an agenda knows exactly how to hold it off for as long as they... They know how long to hold it off until they really show their head. Because they, they, they plan this to get you. But they're not going to do it easy off. They're going to be with you. They're going to spend more time with you. They're going to make you like, you my main. That's what they say. You my main. You my main squeeze. And he sit with you and he go over there, you spend time with him. And you burn in passion. Because what happened is you now you 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 closer to him. Now you got a lot of passion fueling on the inside toward him. Because you feel like this is the one. And all of a sudden, all your godly communication began to cease. And when you ask him to go to church, he say, you know, I, you know, I mean the church is me. I mean, I am the church. And you override all your godly understanding. Because people like to say that you are the church to avoid accountability. You don't want to be accountable to nobody. You don't want to be in the house of God because you don't want nobody to see who you really are. So when a real woman of God, a real man of God come, you walking away like. Or you upset when they come around because they're going to expose your lies. They see straight through you. They can see you. And that's what the enemy don't. Listen, y'all, how it happened every time. Especially what the enemy want to do for our, the saints of God is to get us in sexual sins. Let me. But I'm going I'm I'm to be. I'm going to understand that there's children in here. But that's, that's what he want us to get to. But it's a slow step. The mindset of the enemy is slow, y'all. Yes, it is. Because he hates you already. But a person who hates you is really going to tell you everything that you want to hear. Everything you want to hear. They're going to tell you everything you want to hear. And it's going to sound like, man, this is, where is that? I'm reiterating on this because this is, this is the timeline we live in. This is the timeline we live in. Come on. Because of excess flesh, y'all, mm -hmm. because of so much flesh, people got that lust is never satisfied. Mercy. And it wouldn't matter, even if he got you, he gonna try to get somebody else too. Huh. All right. And somebody else too. Mm -hmm. And after a while, he's gonna talk to you real ugly. Mm. And you're gonna call him crying and why you do me like this? And, and you miss the voice of the witness. Mm. The voice of the witness of the inside, the voice of the witness of people, and now you're in a position of being judged. You're ju being judged now because you missed the voice, because you were listening to the flesh. Y'all, we gotta walk this straight and narrow path and understand that everything that's trying to come in, it's, it has an agenda. There's people that's placed in your life, and that's the enemies that's putting people in your life. Amen. If people don't want to live holy, and that's a key indicator, y'all. Mm -hmm. Holiness is necessary, y'all. Yeah. And holiness, yeah. let me say this. Yeah. Holiness is just not a tire, y'all. All right. Holiness is conversation, y'all. Yeah. Those people that like to gossip all the time, they're defiling your conversation. Yeah. They're defiling your mindset. Mm. That's what they're doing to you. And before you know it, you have, you have a, 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 you like to hear gossip. Mm. And when you listen to gossip, guess what? Everything else will go along with that. No. That means every now and then you're going to see some people that's dressed very lewd. Let's go for the brothers because the brothers like to see things. Mm. 
Mm. The women like to hear things. Mm. And so they get you to seeing things that you shouldn't see. Mm. And all of a sudden, you say, it don't bother me. Mm. Oh, it don't bother me that they doing this. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to see them. Mm. Okay. At all. all Let right. me just say it like that. Come at all. all right. And any wise brother would say the same. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. Amen. But see, this is the flip of it. See, lust is so strong that, see, we like, we used to make sure that we didn't have our children or, you know, be around certain people that was a, you know, whether it be a woman or a male. But now the lust has switched, y'all. Yes. So the women lust after the women beauty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Yeah. All right. yeah. She's so pure that, that, that women lust after. Wow. Mm. She's so fake. Cause that's what it really is. Mm. Amen. Come on. She got 15 inches eyelashes. <laughs> I'm just being real, y'all. Like I'm, being, I'm being honest, y'all. You don't have to add to your your beauty. First and foremost, you need some confidence. And you looking at yourself in the mirror and say, "I'm beautiful." You, if nobody affirms you, you're going to have to affirm yourself. Because even if somebody affirms you, you still got to believe it. You still got to believe it. And then nobody tells you, I'm beautiful. It's mighty funny, y'all, that the people that, that, that look, yeah, the people that don't look as attractive, I'm going to just say that. Beauty is a gift. Let's say that. Beauty is a gift. So the people that don't look as attractive, they got all the confidence in the world. And the women that are beautiful have none. Right. Yeah. They don't have any confidence. Right. And they look at themselves because they're comparing themselves to this other girl. Leave it alone, y'all. Right. Yes, yes, be confident in who God made you to be. You know what? A brother, let me be real with you. A brother would take a confident woman over a, a woman who is not, he's going he gonna to take advantage of a woman that don't have no confidence. Amen. But a woman that got confidence, he's going to cry, he's going to, She's going to be wife. Whether she's n nasty, she's going to be wife. And I, look, look I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being no type of way when I say that. But she's going to be wife because of her confidence. It's going to be a Y'all see it already. I guarantee you can see at least five people in your mind already. You're like, how in the world she got a man? Saying ain't so. I'm, look, I'm only saying what y'all know to be true. You gonna you say that? You say how she got somebody, and that brother go, he'll go the mile for her. He buys stuff, bring in stuff, and she still treat him like nothing. Get out of my face. Talk nasty to him and all. And say it ain't so. Y'all laughing, but y'all know it's true, y'all. This is, this is the time we live in. But the people of God got to stand up and be who they are. We confident people, y'all. A royal priesthood. So when we stand, we walk with our head up. And I tell you, even, even our, you know, look, you don't got to get immodest for the women, but look good, smell good, so that you can be attractive to a man, a good man. Because let me tell you, when a brother got options, he got options. So if you don't look right, that's the first thing he see. Though he shouldn't be led by that. All right. That's the first thing he see. And the brother going to want to have an attractive way, vice versa for the males as well. We want to make sure we groom ourselves and look like somebody that's presentable. That's right, man. That's right. And this is not saying any, but this is how, I don't know why I'm saying this, but this is what I'm saying, y'all. But I'm just telling you, this is how it is, y'all. This is real life. You don't want to find yourself unequally yoked with somebody who know how to look right know how to talk right around people. But see, that's why you gotta really have discernment, y'all. Because people know how to say everything the right way. Especially if you've been around church without spirituality. Because if you've been around church without spirituality, you know all the right words to say. As a matter of fact, before I finish my line, you know exactly what I'm finna say. But at the end of the day, they can't live it. Because living it means you got to crucify the flesh. Right. And people who do not want, who, can, who can't live this world, have not decided to crucify the flesh. Amen. They want to serve God and mammon. It ain't going to happen. All right. It's not going to happen at all. Right. Ain't no way you're going to be able to do it. 
You can't serve two masters. Come on. The master of your flesh gonna have to die, or you gonna just risk your salvation. Y'all right. don't don't get it. Just because they get a, a whole bunch of people shouting and huckabucking, right. it don't necessarily mean that they in right alignment with God. Right. It don't even matter, even if they're being used. God may be using them to heal people. All right. But it don't necessarily mean they're right with God. All right. That's why we follow the book. Yes. And if you're not in the book, you're doing a disservice to yourself because you can't see a wolf. All right. When the wolf is around, you don't know it's a wolf. But the wolf is going to still have on the sheep clothes. All right. But the tendencies of the wolf, he's inconsistent. He don't. Every now and then, you know, every now and then I get upset and I, I have to say what I got to say. I'm going to let you know, you know, you know uh, God don't want me to be soft. Because that's what we like to say when we want to cut somebody out. That's what we want to say when we don't want to live right. We want to give into our flesh and say, you know, you know, you ain't got to be no soft Christian. No, nah, man, you need to be led by the spirit. Amen. Everything shouldn't offend you. I'm not saying that, you know, that, that, that you just accept everything because you can avoid somebody after a while. You, you love them. Hey, I love you, brother. And you going on. But at the end of the day, we ain't we ain't we're not sitting up there like I had to tell them what was on my mind. Thank you, Lord. I repent after this. How many? Y'all know y'all heard this before. I'm going to repent after I do this. All right. But the Lord, had, the Lord knew my heart. Yeah, he know what's in your heart. All right. He know exactly what's in your heart. Yeah. Because you got you to gotta decide in yourself that you're going to serve God regardless. Regardless. Yeah. Regardless of what's going on. Regardless of if somebody else do what's wrong. I was talking yesterday and I was saying like, just talking regarding men. And I said, listen, if your wife ain't doing the book, you're still required to live the Bible. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. If your husband is not living the book, you're still required to live the Bible. Yes, yes. Somehow we say it's contingent upon if he do right or if she do right. Mm. No, that's not true. No, right. That's not true. Because in the, in the process of him acting silly or you acting silly, mm -hmm. you're being perfected. Because right. there's some things that's inside of you that God's trying to expose. Okay. And this is here what Joseph, Jacob had to find out for himself. Mm -hmm. Jacob had to find out that the trickster that he really was mm. had to die out. So he met a man that was just like him. All right. <laughs> Ain't that the way God fix you? All right now. He brings somebody around you that's just like you. You married to yourself. <laughs> so when you married to your spouse, you get upset with your spouse because they just like you. I go. Certain areas of your life that you act like you 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 say you may not say something, but you saying a whole lot in the inside. You saying a whole lot in the inside, and so God brings somebody just like you into a place where your will dies out. And this is what Jacob got to, to a point where no longer Lord didn't do I want my own will, but I want the promises that you gave me. All right. And if you want the promises that God promised you, you got to be willing to die out to yourself. Glory. And this is all I'm really saying. I'm closing right now. Come on. You got to be willing to die out to yourself. Amen. When you die out to yourself, this is when we can experience God in a new way. Let's go. This is when we can see the promises of God happen in your life. Many times we have not received the promises of God because we, we have not allowed ourselves to give God the best sacrifice. So many times we want to give him the offering that Cain gave. God, I gave you an offering. I came to church today. God, I prayed. You think God don't know when you're really being serious? All right. Come on. I mean, God know already. So I always say this. It's better to just be honest. Yeah. It's better to be honest. God, I really don't feel like praying. I really don't feel like going to church. You know, sometimes I feel like eat folk faith. Just be real. I'm just, just be real. And so God deliver your mind. And just be real. Yeah. 
You think God didn't know how your mind was? Just be honest. Yeah. Just be honest so he can help you. Yeah. And when you're honest, he'll give you a new mind. Yeah. All right. He'll give you a new heart. Yes. He'll say, yeah, that's where I wanted you to be in. Yeah. Now you're willing to wrestle with me. Yes. Now you're willing to get serious with me. All right. Tell me what you really want now. Mm. Remind me of the promises because that's what Jacob got, got in his mind. He began to remind him of the promises. All right. Are you willing in this moment right now to begin to remind God of the promises that he promised you? Let's go. If you're willing right now, I encourage you to lift up your hands. You stand on your feet and lift up your hand. I'm going to give this microphone to Brother Smith. But I encourage you, if you're willing to wrestle with God for your destiny. Let's go. Your destiny. Hello. And I don't care how old or how young you are. I got it. To wrestle for your destiny, you're wrestling all the way until your life is over. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Even Jacob at his old age leaned over his staff and he blessed God yes. for the promises that was going to come to pass. Oh. Yet not seeing it. Yet still believing it. Yeah. Came to Egypt with like 72 people. Yes. But out of his descendants were millions. Yeah. Who's coming out of your loins? Hallelujah. Who's going to be in your family? Yeah. Millions of people can come out of the witness of your life. You think what you're doing is just a small thing. Yes. But to God it's a big thing. No. Don't think that it's small. Despite not the small beginnings. Yeah. You think you come into church consistently is a small thing. Mm. But every time you come into church, something is happening in the atmosphere. People are beginning to, to wake up. People that are asleep, that the enemy has deceived. Preachers that are lost out of the way are beginning to come back. And God is beginning to wake them up. And I'll tell you this story. Oh. One morning I got up and I found myself in a little warfare and I began to pray to the Lord and begin to worship God. And it was as if God revealed to me a water drop hit in steel water. And when the water drop hit the steel water, there was a ripple effect. Yes. And he said, resurrecting spiritual giants. Mm -hmm. Do you not realize that your life by you being consistent, by you warring, you standing in the gap, that you're resurrecting somebody that's been dead. Somebody that you know they can do a mighty thing for God. How is it that they cannot see what's going on in their life? Resurrect their life. If we can believe, we can get behind God and believe the promises. God just looking for somebody who believe him. Let's go. So if it be a child, so let it be so. What did he say to him? Who said that you were his child? He said, before I formed thee in your mother's womb, I knew thee. Who said that you are a child? I'm only a child. I'm only a boy. No, 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 no. When God get a hold of you, there's a mark that he put on you. And people know it because they said there's something different about this child. Glory. That the child begin to say biblical things even early. That's why I always encourage to guard the children. Guard them until it's time for God to raise them up to echo their voice to the nations. Everything that God distinctly made about you was for the calling that you have. My voice is loud because it's the way God wanted me to be. He knew that I would be up here yelling at y'all. Let's go. But even then, my grandmother would say, you're going to be a preacher, boy. That's what she said to me. At the time, I didn't realize it. But I preached in everything, y'all. If it, if it was about basketball, I would like, you know, this is what really happened. In, I would put it to a science. But I'm telling you right now, if you really want to receive the favor of God, to go forward in God, Today is the day. You may feel like I don't feel anything. But an act of faith can activate some things. An act of faith 
can do some things. So you can find your way to this altar to activate God. I don't feel nothing, God, but I want something. I don't want to not feel nothing. Good grace. I don't want to not feel nothing. I don't want to not not have a conviction. God, I pray that I have a conviction to pray. It's just as bad to not have a conviction not to pray for the loss. So if you don't have those, y'all, there's purpose in every one of you all in here. Yes, Don't doubt it. If you will, if you're willing to come before the altar, nobody got to necessarily lay hands on you. This is just your commitment to God. Let's go. To saying, God, I want what you want. I want to do what you call me to do. Yes, God. I'm not just a failure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you're not just a failure. Hallelujah. But I don't care what your battles are. I don't know. I don't care what your issues are. I don't care what you've been through. He's a God that erases that and he writes over your paper. He'll write over your heart.